House of only cans, that's your only man So sit back, relax, that's the only plan Grab yourself a Guinness or Peroni, man Welcome to the show, this is Only Cans Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> how are you lads? Thank you for tuning in last week Great reception from it um, Delighted with how it all went So yeah, fair play Only Cans episode 2 My first guest this week Harry McNulty uh, Harry, aka Salty Nuts, I should say With a pretty decent Instagram name Harry, oh Jesus, what does he not do? He plays for the Irish Rugby Sevens team. He's now moving over to play, uh, got signed by a club in Los Angeles. You'll hear all about that. He's a, a traveling man. The guy's been all over the globe. He's got a mullet, but like he pulls it off. Not a weirdo with a mullet. Um, loves filmmaking, photography, cooking. It just, just a a pretty cool dude to be fair also something to keep in mind just before you watch the video harry has a, a collaboration i suppose you'd call it with budgie smugglers they make kind of what you would call speedos Um i'll put a picture on the screen now if you're listening budgie smugglers we all know budgie smugglers the things you'd wear uh, when you're going swimming that look like they're riding up your ass basically you see his own personal salty nuts budgie smugglers made they're for sale so yeah just keep that in mind also just to know before it'll all make sense in a second lads um basically harry when he arrived he gave me this budgie smuggler bottle opener which is pretty cool if you are listening lads um i would ma- strongly advise going and watching the first two minutes of the podcast and then going back to listen if that's what you prefer it'll all make sense in three two one enjoy here's harry mcnulty born in bahrain big ice hockey fan and a food scientist to boot flat door of the explorer check out his social media he's all over the world mcnulty mcnulty runs at the england line harry mcnulty to cup in the air now along the turf he goes mcnulty opens up smugglers now so he gave me a bottle opener card with budgie smugglers on it so I said oh you have a you have a collaboration pretend I know nothing so How's it going? And you gave me this, and you're like, I have the. the you could, couldn't be more perfect because I was yeah. going, he's going to think I'm absolutely fucking weird <laughs> just coming out in a pair of speedos. But then you gave me this, and I was like, ah, oh, no have to do it way. Now. That is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll put some pants on. There you go. go. Brilliant. That and is that so fun. funny. Yeah, that's your reaction. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are something else. I can have a drink of this, right? Do I need to save it for the pocket? Yeah. Yeah, slow to lads. Bitch, it's looking. It's looking like a headless Nick. ASMR. Look, look. What a fucking drop! Like that's mad because he had that much on his. And it's the exact same. I've never seen that happen ever. Have you not? Never. I've never seen it, that. It probably happens once every eight cans. Look at the fucking state of that. I put it on the exact same thing yeah, yeah, yeah. in the fridge, the exact same thing. There's no but it rhyme made, or reason to it. It made the noise too. Yeah, I know. Well, speaking of Guinness, Harry, uh, I'm here with Harry McNulty, <laughs> by the way, anyway. Good start. <laughs> You're a Guinness man, Harry. Yes. How long are you drinking Guinness? Mm. How long have I been drinking Guinness? Um, I have drank Guinness probably as my main drink for, I'm going to say, like probably around the last five years so oh, I'm at 27 now probably like 22 23 uh, but I had my first Guinness when I was 18 with my dad in Dingle in Flaherty's pub Flaherty's okay. yeah Flaherty's or yeah down in um, just like near the Super Value it's around the corner it's kind of like this old pub they do Irish music and it's really chill but it's my dad's favorite pub so had a had my first ever pint of Guinness down there at 18 yes yeah I'm very similar I think we're the same age we're both 27 mm-hmm. um, but yeah probably drinking at main drink like four or five years would that be your favorite pub then or do you have your own favorite pub oh favorite pub so i could 
talk about a few pubs really like, like, I think you, anyone you could t- everyone has their local from growing up but yeah. we'll go into your story but you don't, don't have, have a local. the place to, you don't your man dad didn't bring you down to the local in Bahrain for a pint of no, Guinness no that's I wouldn't for say sure so. No. <laughs> so like do you have a favourite pub yeah so the Stag's Head in Dublin I've been there yeah that would be probably my favourite pub and for a multitude of reasons favourite pub or favourite pint or both um, probably pub the pints there are very good as well yeah um but it's just like I've been there a lot of times. Anytime friends came to visit, I'd bring them there because they'd have live music on a Friday and the band would play in the basement yeah. and it was wild. And we had right. such good crack and we usually get a table and we get a load of pints and it's great fun. So just like the whole atmosphere is amazing. I love um, where now is great. Like um, Foxy John's down Dingle. Yeah. It's like an incredible, uh, incredible pint to give Honestly, it. I've... I've when I was we were in Foxy John's maybe two years ago couldn't get over how good it was then I started Guru like a year later mm-hmm. it's the one place I've, I've given Grave Diggers in, in Glasnevin the highest score yeah. I think it's the one place I've ever been to it could give a run for its money yeah uh, no problem and like the setup in there is top class like if you want to drink a pint of Guinness yeah. Foxy John's is probably the best place to go drink one as well yeah. like in uh, terms of like the hardware uh, store they've got yeah. the fire in the back uh, Paddy O'Shea's out in Ventry. I don't know if you've ever made your I way out there. I haven't, but I've heard a lot about it. Yeah, I uh, this time it was this time last year. I was down in Dingle for New Year's, and on the thirtieth, no, the first morning, no, thirtieth, thirtieth morning. 30th, oh, jeez, how many days are in the month? Thirty-first morning. <laughs> <laughs> on the thirty-first morning, uh, myself and my friend John play sevens with me. We actually hitchhiked from Dingle to Ventry. Just so that we could go <coughs> get a couple of pints out in Ventry and How then hitchhike it? back. It's like a couple of kilometers, only like you have a hitchhike and head in your hurry. No, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, that's like the first time I ever did it, but it was worth yeah. it. Yeah, go go get a couple of pints out in parties. Yeah, got a toasted ham sandwich and then hitchhiked our way back in. Yeah, solid. Love Dingle, <clears throat> and you get change when you buy a pint down there as well. Yeah, yeah. from a fiver. Yeah, 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 you give a fiver, you get change yeah. back, which is uh, all too rare here. Very right, Harry. Yep. The mullet. The mullet. Oh. Uh, yeah, get it out. Come on. Get it out for... Ah, uh, Jesus. <laughs> Hopefully you can slow that down. <laughs> um, is there any, like, rhyme or reason to it? Um, no. Uh, coronavirus is... COVID is probably the main You You were uh, looking source. for an excuse to grow a mullet, basically. Yeah. And COVID I, hit, you are like, yes! I've looked for a couple of excuses to is have. Is it your first ever mullet? first ever proper mullet yeah so i've wanted a mullet for a while but just more so like with the lads you know oh we're like we're you know getting dressed up for the end of the year piss up or whatever let's like let's all like get a bad haircut and do a mullet or whatever but then you know that it's only one night and then you're gonna have yeah. that haircut for however long and then you got to go to the barbers and <clears throat> it just becomes like so annoying um so i never bit the bullet but then with covid lockdown everyone was shaving their heads uh, kind of jumped on that buzz uh, cut my hair real short but like knowing that like I'm just going to keep growing it as we went and then I got my brother to give me a mullet when so you you grew that in like nine months probably just under yeah probably less that's just insane. less than that yeah that's uh, class. yeah it's funny it's grown real quick real fast yeah. so never had. you're a hairy man Harry uh, weirdly uh, I am hairy like, weirdly like, yeah. even with Movember <laughs> I was looking at your like I was I've been following you for a few months and I was I, I did Movember myself mm-hmm. I looked kind of okay but like you're just rocking around with the mullet and the mustache just <laughs> like fucking doing what you want the rest was looking okay. like dweebs <laughs> Hawaii 5-0 yeah, kind of honestly, stuff Harry I'm going to you've obviously uh, I wouldn't say you're sick of talking about it, but it's oh. probably a, it always comes up the, the mad not mad, but the, the grown-up story you have. Yeah. So I'm going to attempt to tell it in, in like 30 seconds. Okay, go on. And you tell me what I've gotten wrong. Obviously, I missed it stuff. Okay. But born in Bahrain. Yep. 1993. Yep. Very quick at the Eps. Two month, a few months later, moved to London. Four years old, moved to New York. Played a bit of hockey. Yep. 14 years old, moved to... This isn't on the laptop, by the way. You can check it out. Okay. It's not there. 14 years old, <laughs> moved to somewhere in Tip. Yep. Yeah, went to Rockwell College, mm-hmm. won the Leinster, no shit, Munster <laughs> Senior Cup. Yep. Twenty eleven. Yep. Food science degree. Went to Queensland in twenty fifteen for mm-hmm. a bit, and been playing sevens since twenty sixteen for Ireland. Yeah. And you do loads of other, other shit. How's that? That's like ninety nine point nine percent. I didn't want to. Yeah, just like I got it and go. 
tell me about yeah. it's, it's a long like you'd probably tell about take about yeah i've told that a good to few tell. times so yeah, yeah exactly i'd spin so a long yarn that's, about it so. that's his, that's his upbringing <laughs> yeah there you go uh, uh bahrain yeah sure listen google it <laughs> there you um, go well i want to talk about sevens right so sure for me like when i i think of sevens like a lot of my mates would you we just think like if i whatever i didn't know you i don't know the irish team i just think sevens i just think piss up okay like you're in the stadium, like, <laughs> go to the stadium obviously you're a professional sevens yep. player so it's different but i'm an outsider mm-hmm. i think sevens piss up uh, in a good way like mm-hmm. looks like great crack like is it always how many like how many tournaments have you played is it always as wild as it comes across yeah so i've been lucky enough to be on both sides of the I was <laughs> spectator say, and playing it was, a, it was a double question mm-hmm. the second part was are you ever on the pitch I was going to say have you ever attended but I was going to be like are you ever just on the pitch playing looking up the stands being like I wish I was just up there <laughs> getting pissed <laughs> well like I suppose you know if you're playing like when you play a seven storm you play six games you play three on the Saturday and three on the Sunday <clears throat> yeah and like depending on the pool that you get put in you could end up losing all your three games on you know Saturday and then you know you've got to come come right on Sunday and then play another three games or like if you lose your first two then you just you're out altogether you last place but like you know if you're going through a tournament like that then you definitely want to be up in the stands yeah. like because they're having good fun and you're well, not just you're like, struggling but it's not just like hong kong whatever is, is it every time and, and um, why is it yeah so hong kong is like the number mm-hmm. one that's absolutely that's mental. top of my that's, bucket list that's a very very like good six in the morning of, like, yeah, yeah yeah i've done it twice you've done it twice yeah so oh, you, was this before was this when you were younger like so, no no so the so i oh, went because you weren't we weren't oh, on the national we weren't yeah. on this in that series at the time so i went over to play in a tens tournament and then the tens tournament happens midweek and then you go to the seven tournament to compete during the weekend or like to watch on the weekend so right. so like i went with the team that i played with when i was in australia did a tour yeah. so i went and re-met up with them played with them and then watched so i was there 6 a.m. we had to be in the hotel lobby. 6.30 we all had to go get breakfast at McDonald's. Uh, 7 o'clock we were at the stadium. And we had oh, to this is... I was thinking in Hong this Kong. is when you're playing. I was no, like, no, no, this is... <laughs> this is when I was on the on the, the tennis tournament tour. And yeah. then um, 7 o'clock in the morning we're at the stadium. We would have already bought drink before arriving. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock you're at the stadium and you're already dressed up. There's a queue out out of the stadium. There's a queue out of the stadium around the corner and you're just having drinks when you go in like they're really like chill about the whole thing they just pat you down yeah. but like if you have like a carton of juice but it'd be like <laughs> a vodka and orange or whatever it might be they, yeah, they let you bring it in as long as it's not made from anything like glass something that can yeah, hurt yeah. someone if it's a carton that course, they don't mind. Yeah. and then you go into the back and there's a thing called the south stand so it's a one specific stand that has basically created this atmosphere it's a one in one out style of stand right that they barricade on the either side is this so, only hong kong or is this no everywhere? this is just hong kong this oh, is why it's yeah, so yeah. famous yeah. and this is why it's I've created seen videos yeah this created this atmosphere <laughs> is that once it's full it's full and if you leave then you've got to wait in the queue to get back in so there's people what who about taking piss they have all that stuff in oh, there okay but grand. there's no atm so you got to bring all your money with you oh, fuck. and then if you leave then you want to come back in the, the, people have waited for like three hours to get in and there's no tickets it's literally like a nightclub like pretty much yeah yeah so there's no seats numbers either so you go in and you pick your area you oh go in with all your God. mates so we went with there was 30 of us so 30 of us go in and we pick up the, that the why you're going space. at seven in the morning yeah because to get in to make sure you get in yeah, yeah and then your games don't start till nine but the bar opens as soon as you get in Holy they serve shit. guinness in a one liter Let's go and do a review they serve guinness in a one liter uh plastic bo- uh plastic cup because there's so oh many God, people that sounds awful there's so <laughs> many people buying drink yeah and the demand is so high that they have to serve them in one liters because they can't get them out quick enough so you're going around with like big one liter thing yeah you'll have to go and, and like, have to do a review yeah honestly yeah and and then if you're and, then, and sort of at the other so stands, the other tournaments like de- depends man. some years like yeah, they're yeah. really good some years obviously people who actually want to watch two matches of course because i was going to say are you ever on the pitch like looking at the stands just going are these fuckers even looking mm. Or you're just so Hong Kong, like Hong Kong. When I was there, mm-hmm. we if you were when we were in the stands, 
if you were caught watching it was a fine so like that's a lot of the people yeah. are like that as well but it's but, only it's mainly the one stand though yeah exactly yeah. but in like in terms of no the terms of the rest like there there is people watching but like you can definitely tell that like when the home nation plays the stadium gets a whole lot louder than yeah. when anybody else plays so it yeah. kind of it goes ebbs and flows but um hong kong's the best cape town is brilliant cape town's so good vancouver's very good as well and then um, unfortunately you haven't been able to play Singapore because of uh, the season being cancelled so yeah. there's a few there's a few I still want to play but yeah lads just to interrupt the podcast very quickly apologies just to let you know I have launched a, a Patreon page without shiting on about it too much it's basically five or a month for an extra podcast called Extra Cans and also you will get 15% off all Guru merch. There will be merch available hopefully end of February so yeah the Patreon it's five euro a month extra podcast called extra cans 15 percent off guru merch if you if you don't have the fire a month absolutely no problem at all if you do it would just yeah it would obviously mean a lot to support this podcast and hopefully when guinness guru gets back in the road to just be able to go all over ireland sucking on pints and making good content for you lads so yeah patreon.com forward slash the guinness guru if you can great if you can't no hassle at all now shut up dara back to the podcast Let's pour at the same time. Oh, okay. Sorry. Too late. Fuck it. Sorry, 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 sorry. Keen for the pints. Yeah, sorry about that. Right, Harry, we went for a can break. <laughs> Yours is, your head is about fucking four inches. Mine yeah. is <laughs> not even a quarter of an inch. So, <laughs> But you're doing the dunk it Straight, in. I'm yeah. doing the what they tell you to do. And like when, when the good kid in school follows the rules and the arsehole does that and fucking <laughs> this is where it gets you. But anyway, I was asking you... Um, the, where it all started yeah we won't go on for hours but like yeah did, i was just saying did you only start sevens in 2016 or did it all start in ireland in 2016 yeah so it started in 2015 <laughs> yeah um with uh open day trials so you had to like just basically fill in the form got asked to come down to do a fitness test a sprint and mammy test. did that for you mammy did that for me Good without girl, me mammy. even knowing but Shout yeah out. thank you very much mum. um <laughs> so went like did a fitness test the speed test did all that and then um we had some like trial games did all those and then we actually had a couple of tournaments in 2015 summer and then when that summer finished on the say it was like july or the end of june um got home on the monday and then that thursday i flew to australia and then like i came back for the 2016 for season. your little your um study abroad study abroad yeah. yeah and then i came back um and then i was in 2016 but like realistically like the tournaments we were playing like were like not that high quality like we were playing in europe yeah. it was my first cap was that year yeah but like we were playing against bosnia so if say difference. if if now say before the pandemic fucking mm. a year ago if you would if we're saying the team if it's a 10 a year ago what was it in 2016 out of 10 if you know what oh I mean. like in terms of the level it's just, of just, our team or the who we were playing sorry no sorry like the level of the team okay um you're probably looking at like i would say an eight but for in, from a talent perspective but i would probably say we were pr- playing at a probably like a six okay. or seven right. just because that we were so new to the style of the game yeah. so like the people that were involved from day one were Tom Daly who's now playing for Connacht um, yep. played with him Lancer Utes there you go shout out Tom me Tom <laughs> <laughs> that was crap <laughs> there you go so we had Tom Daly involved yeah. we had um, like these are probably through the first three years or whatever you had Barry Daly you had Shane Daly Hugh, um, in later years we had Hugh Keen and Will Connor so they were probably as we got, grew on a bit further but these lads just got Irish caps yeah. we had Dan Goggin yeah. Nick Timoney um, geez like, I, I, like we had you say had were, were, are they not playing anymore well, no they're, we, they played sevens and then they went and like they've gone to go yeah. play for Ulster and yeah. Leinster yeah, 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 and yeah. Ireland and all these so yeah. like so we had had all these players who were like really high quality um but like our experience in the game of sevens yeah. wasn't as high as it is now <laughs> so enough. like it wouldn't allow us to play like we were drawing or losing to russia who were like a good good enough team yeah. but now like we've beaten russia like 40 nil yeah in some sure, like russia on an international scale in 15s would be like compared to ireland would be 
non-existent so yeah so it just but took a bit of time it just took a bit of time so like you know russia was our biggest threat at, yeah. at one stage so, so i've got kind go. of the breakdown so we don't have to go through like yeah. everything so 2016 you started uh failed to qualify for the olympics mm -hmm. sorry about that harry mm -hmm. 2017 this will make you feel better 2017 moscow sevens leading try scorer yeah there you How go tries? six six tries <laughs> uh 2018 world cup finished ninth so which is actually a good result we're getting better we're yeah getting it's better. a good result 2019 qualified as a core team which i presume just means you're up there with like the fijis and so essentially it means that we made the world series which is the equivalent of a team in soccer you know all the yanks say soccer, soccer um going from the championship to the premiership mm. we qualify for the 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 equivalent of the premiership yeah, which is called the world series familiar with sevens it's very much just tournaments tournaments it's yes. not just a league because you couldn't just be flying to fucking fiji no 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 exactly yeah so it's uh it's 10 tournaments around the world yeah. so we qualified for the world series which is that level yeah, yeah. right harry on to now now that's all the past yeah it's a lot jeez 2021 harry mcnulty makes his way to the los angeles guiltinis yeah very good what yeah. we were talking <laughs> in the car possibly the best team now i've ever heard you were saying it's because of the, the owner or something but just give us a quick yeah. brief of so it's we're recording this in what is it december December, December 29th 29th of December God knows when this will be out but you'll probably you might be in LA that's sad to think yeah. you might be in LA when this comes out possibly we'll see all so, going well so uh, yeah what's the what's the plan what's the crap? so um, again coronavirus has kind of put a spanner in the works for everyone um, and so for my seventh career all c tournaments that were on the horizon had been cancelled and that was for probably like an eight month period nine month period um so i was trying to think like look i'm 28 tw or 27 going on 28 um i need to start making some big boy decisions around yeah. you know possibilities like is something going to happen or is it not um so my brother is playing in, in america and um, i was kind of talking to him about it and i thought well, if anywhere is going to play rugby or play any sport when the pandemic is on it's probably the states love the attitude <laughs> right? well, I, <laughs> you know i was just watching no, you know being honest that's just watching the on. news and seeing everything yeah. it was like look realistically it's either that or play for a team that is involved in um some sort of campaign that's within their country so like a team in australia yeah, or new yeah. zealand and realistically that wasn't going to be a, a yeah. possibility well like there's um, no there's no covid in america that's if you well, watch yeah, news, well, they, just, it just, they don't have it there so you'd be grand they just i don't know what they what they're doing over there but yeah. so i just thought look i'll have a look and my brother like the opportunity to play with my brother yeah. was like a huge yeah. part of all of this so had a talk in la came up there a new team entering into the league and i was like la i do a lot of content creation myself on the side the best place in the world to do content it's creation is la professional rugby as well like yeah. basically two things i love to do in one um you know let's let's have a talk let's see um and like it took a couple months and yeah it turns out that they were happy enough to sign me so i'm happy i'm Come happy on. with that um you getting on that uh the, like la tinder or are you can wait till you get over there <laughs> we'll see we'll see i mean like you don't know bars open everything like that i'd yeah. much prefer just to you know meet someone out and about and you know yeah. see what the crack is but like you know times are getting tough just so my mullet. yeah yeah i yeah. actually i have a t-shirt out on right now that um i wore this is the first time i wore it but i think it's like kind of perfect for something like that this is like i'll, for, well, I'll just show it just for like girlfriends and stuff yeah sure get the yeah, fucking yeah, thing yeah. off <laughs> i was like where's he going with this so, uh, actually shout out james Kavanagh for this one he showed me this t-shirt yeah, okay. yeah shout out james we actually met him long story <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is actually a funny t-shirt get the rig out come on no 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 <sighs> It turned towards me. If she is your girlfriend, why is she playing with my mullet? Well, <laughs> fuck me. What did I say? I mean, like, you're walking around looking like that, shredded as a fucking cheese grater with the mullet and the fucking mustache mm. hanging off. It's literally like, Mr. Steel, your girl. So there, I think. No, sorry. I think the, this will have to just be my, like, <laughs> casual wear. Just and wear this around the street. You gotta get the sleeves chopped off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get some denim shorts. Yeah. Yeah, so. Right, I'm looking forward to it. Should be good. For LA. Yeah, uh, man. Um, I asked you yesterday, Harry, if you we like oh, to yeah. ask people to provide a drunk story. Jeez. Now I'm not saying you have to be fucked off your ass when it yeah, happens. Yeah. Like, no, you're not going to embarrass yourself here. Mm -hmm. But uh, anything come to mind? 
So I've been thinking about this. I've actually struggled um, thinking about stories. Oh, sorry. Perfect. So I've, <coughs> I've been thinking about this. Um, I've actually struggled. Kind of okay. struggled a bit. Um, but so my re- most recent one, like when I drink, I try to like obviously have a lot of fun and I'll drink a good bit. But like, I, you know, I don't try and like, you know blackout or by any means yeah, like yeah, i try yeah. and keep some sort of focus yeah. on what i'm having like have the crack so but when you were younger did you were you uh, not really like, i've always been quite yeah. like just like i like i have obviously yeah but like it wasn't you know it wasn't like i'm gonna just drink as much as i can it was just yeah. kind of got into a situation where it turned out i'd end up drinking a lot more than i was expecting or would have drank yeah. b- before like sitting, sitting on, i'm getting fucking black no, exactly. this happens more when you're younger I guess. exactly so um like the most recent one would be like actually when I was in Bermuda we had a team night out um, and we were drinking goslings which is the the local rum and dark and stormies are the the traditional drink of Bermuda right. so we're drinking them and like got this whole team like we're having such a great great time and we get this big bucket like it was like a bucket that you would fill with ice and wine do you know like that kind of style yeah yeah it was the only thing we could get our hands on and we filled it with like a bottle of goslings and then like a bottle of ginger beer to like make a huge dark and stormy it makes me feel sick even thinking about it dark and stormy yeah and then we were passing it around one by one to each other and all these we had a couple of Kenyan guys on our team and it was called like a a coraga I'm pretty sure I can't I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right basically it's like an offering kind of thing so we would like pick it up take like this big swig and then pass it on I ended up like falling asleep me and my roommate and they're all drinking in the room like um, they all leave my roommate wakes up in the middle of the night and I'm like shaking this massive painting on the wall <laughs> like I'm I'm shaking it back and forth Jeez. I go to the bathroom and then I take both of the like the shower robes off the off the hanger and I lay them down and I like fall asleep in front of the door um, just so randomly weird but then I woke up in my bed so like he had to tell me all this I didn't wake up in front of the door and like start questioning this. don't remember any of that so yeah. I must have been like sleepwalking or something basically because I've never done anything the bucket. someone definitely <laughs> spiked the bucket right I'm going to go the Harry McNulty okay, go on, give, us a, give us a go here I'll ASMR it yeah <laughs> oh that's going to be good Just slam dunk. Yeah. You don't even twist it around. You just, just literally. Slam dunk, yeah. Minimum effort, maximum satisfaction. Oh, that's gonna sound good. There's no way this can't be for me. No, that's a good one. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. There's a new guru in town. There you go. You never had like the, you know, the breathing effect, like the movement effect when you poured your other ones. Maybe no, I'll, but like, I, uh, something must be up with the like, thing. Guinness fucking website, like the the master brewers. That's what they say. They say slow, slowly and all. Slow and steady. Slow and steady <laughs> does not win the race in this case. <laughs> there you go. That looks like a great pint. It does. Thanks, Guru. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> right. Better talk a bit about traveling, Harry. Okay, Grant. I would say, from the outside in, you've obviously got a lot of different passions in life, but. Rugby, mm-hmm. traveling, mm-hmm. bit of cooking in there. Mm-hmm. Top three, kind of Harry McDonald yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. So traveling, 2019, you won a competition with Royal <sighs> Car- Caribbean. Caribbean, 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 whatever. It depends where you're from, yeah. Is that how you say it? Yes. From Bahrain. Right? Yeah. Me, it's there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Royal Caribbean cruise line yeah. uh, looked sick. Yeah. Give me like a 60 second. Six second. What the fuck? How many girls did you show? Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm working here. I'm working uh, here. <laughs> so, Ant sent me a Facebook link saying apply for this job. It's for you. Applied for it. Ended up somehow winning it. There was 30,000 contestants. Uh, went around the world in three and a half weeks. I was in Miami, Bahamas, Alaska, Japan, Dubai, Portugal, Norway. Oh, fuck off! It, like, are you <laughs> serious? That's a piss. Take. It averaged out to be it about paid as well. Paid as well. Uh, Everything yeah. paid for. Joke. It, it averaged out to be about three days per place, but some places were like maybe only two. Some places were four. Um, so ten spots. Yeah, ten like ten spots. Yeah, um, like <sighs> wild. Um, Miami like depending where I was 
like um they organize stuff for me so miami like i could organize my own things kind of easy enough but like somewhere like alaska they allowed me to pick things to do so one of them was like get a helicopter or go to the top of a glacier and then do dog sledding up there which was crazy <laughs> and you're just basically taking i was documenting all doc- this and yeah. Yeah, like <clears throat> posting on their Instagram, like I was yeah. taking over, yeah. and then um, yeah, just showing people what they could do when they arrive in a destination. Basically, was the was the key. But uh, Alaska and Japan were uh, were yeah, amazing. Japan is Japan is top of the list for me. Yeah, oh, I would love to love top, to go back on that subject. Top three countries. Just, Ooh, wow, you have to do it. Okay, no cool. beating around the bush. No worries. And it has to be a number one as well. Okay, so like three to one. Okay, grand. Just oh, okay. your favorite countries in the world not like a you can't say Bahrain I'm like really bad at these kind of questions but I'll do it <clears throat> I'll do it for the sake of the podcast I've got unlimited money I want to go on a sick trip to three okay. countries where am I going okay um, I think so these are places I've been because of the money thing yeah, no, I could go anywhere been. you have to have been so three Jordan cool so you have like Petra is there anybody who's like an uh, Indiana Jones kind of fan it's like Wonder all that world. kind of stuff yeah. yeah one of the seven wonders of the world yeah. food's amazing people are beautiful you've got the uh, the Dead Sea there as well and you've got the where you can float it's so, so salty yeah and then you've got the That's Red cool. Sea there as well which is like beautiful water you can go scuba diving so cool place really enjoyed it um, two uh, Uganda so in Africa Jesus um, went there to go see silverback gorillas in the wild um, so like literally 10 feet away from male silverback gorilla like if he wanted to rip my head off he could have and you got a real close up shot so I got a I have like a long lens so I can get like right up got a portrait shot of that which is one of my favorite photos I've ever had an opportunity to take but it's it's a massive country East Africa that's uh, gets a lot of rain so it's very vibrant um, and supplies a lot of food to a lot of the other countries surrounding it so you get a lot of different climates you get desert up in the north um it's very different and then you get the rainforest down um in the west and then you got other stuff in the middle so beautiful country yeah. and then number one would be fiji i went to fiji for three and a half weeks um Just a- after the world cup okay the the sevens world cup so yeah. you could fly direct from from san fran so i was like i might as well just do that brought my friend with me we went to three different islands there's 300 islands so you could go back and you could do different things every time you're there. Um, people are amazing. Great, great kind of culture and like the views and the things that you can do are, are crazy and love to go back. So those three, like, and they're a bit more Jordan, outside the box. Uganda, too. Fiji. You yeah. Couldn't probably get more of a triangle. Yeah. Well, so. <laughs> some a little more different. You yeah. know, I like to try and go to different places and yeah. like to showcase. My main thing is showcasing people what's out there. You know, some people... There's nothing wrong with it, but they go to the same holiday destination for Benadorm. ten, wherever it could be. Yeah, won't name names, <laughs> yeah. but like, but like they go, that, that's that's fine as well. Like. Completely fine, but yeah. you know, if there's anyone out there who's you know thinking, right, I'm sick of going to the same place over and over. I want to go somewhere new. That's where I hopefully kind of fall in and be like, look, I went to this place. Yeah. Maybe you've never thought of it before. It was amazing. This is what I got up to. Sick. Maybe they'll give it a go. Yeah. So big question here. <laughs> You have to give up one. Okay. Rugby. Okay. Or traveling. Ah, Jesus. I give up rugby because it's not gonna it won't last me forever. I thought you'd say that. Harry. Yes. <laughs> Marhaban. <laughs> Kaifalik. Marhaban. <laughs> Bit of Arabic here now, yeah. Kaifalik. Kaifalik. Oh Kaifalik. I don't even know anymore. My Arabic is I just asked you a question. Yeah, right? I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I just, I'm trying to think. Like lockdown, you try to learn a bit of Arabic. I well, did I don't, try I don't to know learn. anymore. So mm. like, you're not under any pressure. Mm. How's it? How's I know. Arabic I was like, mar, mar, I saw man, you doing a video, uh, playing a, a hole of golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm at hole. It's <laughs> an Arabic word here. <laughs> it was brilliant. So you know what the Arabic? It's it's so tough. I've kind of been on a bit of a lull, like a bit of a break. It's, I definitely want to keep it up. Like I have like an app and everything that I try yeah. and do every day um, but the thing about it just is just quickly one people are going what the fuck is Arabic you're born in Bahrain born, born in Bahrain so the native Arabic. language is yeah. Arabic so that's so, where yeah. it came from but the um, the thing about Arabic is people will tell you that know how to speak it is it's one of the most diverse languages or like rich languages for mm-hmm. one word like table there could be like five ways to say it okay so if you're trying to learn Arabic, then you've got to try and learn how to say table in five different ways. Right. Or flower could be said in five different ways. Yeah. So like in other languages, that would be a bit more, say, basic. 
then it, like there would only be one word for table. There would be only yeah. one word, for, and every country that speaks Arabic speaks a different slang or dialect. So everywhere you go will be slightly different as well. They all speak different words. So like kind of South America, like it's literally the same everywhere or different everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. So you know, for me trying to learn it, like I'm nearly in the back of my head. I'm like, well, which part of which part yeah, of yeah. The, of uh, of the world am I actually learning this Arabic for you so know if so if I started shining on in Arabic not that I will because there's no chance <laughs> would you understand me and then you probably wouldn't be able to reply or would you just be totally but I result? am by no means at that level whatsoever yeah. but like that, that is the plan is to be one either be able to just understand or have some sort of understanding of yeah. what someone is saying to me or um, you know be able to converse slightly it actually stemmed from when I went to Jordan Excuse me. Uh, when I went to Jordan, it gets burpy, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. A little bit. <laughs> when I went to Jordan, I ended up pulling up to a coffee shop. No one spoke English, and I ended up sitting with six local lads while they played cards, and I drank coffee. And there was one guy there who spoke English a bit. That's the most Harry McNulty salty nut story <laughs> I've ever heard. I was in Jordan and I was drinking coffee, and I said, oh, "I better learn Arabic." <laughs> but I couldn't. You know, I couldn't. I couldn't speak to these guys. I couldn't. You know, converse. They were trying to like speak with me. I had my camera. They wanted me to take photos of them. What it was like you good feel fun. Like, is it the Bahrainian? Is that right? Bahraini, yeah, Bahraini. Is it the Bahraini in you that's like I need to learn Arabic? Well, I just thought like if I was going to give it a go, like, if I was in Jordan and there were six guys speaking Arabic, I wouldn't feel like I need to give Arabic a go. Well, like the Bahrain part random, is like is the that's st- what I mean. Stems, yeah, 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 yeah. where it stems. But I was like, you know, how cool would it be if I could yeah, relive that moment? But now have some sort of basic understanding of what these guys yeah. were saying or I could say a couple of words and like it would just be a bit of crack going basically. back to the same coffee shop yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to yeah, yeah. it's great crack so um, I was saying briefly about golf there are yeah. you are you into any other sports so yeah I know you played hockey yeah in New York yep but only until you were like 14 yes but did you get into any fights uh, no, like that age group upwards is kind of where fights actually yeah. start. Kids are too. I was like, you've got the hockey fighter head. <laughs> you really do. A bit more of a beard. And yeah, it's like- yeah, a tooth knocked out. The old Canadian smile or the hockey smiles. Yeah. Like, your front teeth knocked out. But um, no, like literally from 15, 16 onwards is... You know, a bit more testosterone mm. and kids get bigger, more yeah. physical. That's where fight the right, well, just right at the time, but right or wrong, depends who's asking. But <laughs> fight I um, I do enjoy my golf. I try and play. I'm not that good, but I I do give it a whirl. And then ice hockey, I still love. I keep up to to date with it yeah. to some extent through social media. Okay. And then when we went to LA and Vancouver for the sevens, it was hockey season. So I actually went to a game in LA and I went to a game when I was in Vancouver too. Yeah. So like still love yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, still still love it and my favorite team is the the New York Rangers. So What so. about I not that you're into cliff diving, but I had to say oh, that, yeah. that cliff diving video. I think it's I was on your TikTok. It's not like scandalous amount of views. <laughs> the one uh, Oh the the Red Bull, the, the, way the million the edge of the cliff yeah. was 26 meters and you're just like what's up? Yeah. Like that weird GoPro. I still can't wrap my head around mm-hmm. that just like is like 360 degrees yeah and, and all the comments are just like i was shitting myself watching that. <laughs> what was yeah. that like you was red bull sent you to that just to like so that was shit. in dublin it was in dunleary yeah um this girl who is a professional cliff diver for red bull jess um she reached out and basically said like look we are allowed to basically you know get creators to you know help oh, us okay, like yeah. create some stuff like if you're around It'd be so cool to, you know, if you come down and take some photos or whatever. Yeah. So I brought my mate Tyler with me, who's an incredible creator, and uh, we kind of blagged our way around the weekend, to be honest yeah. with you. Like, proper Irish style. We went down, didn't have any idea what was going on, didn't have any accreditation, uh, just said, like, Jess said we can come down, you know, kind of thing. Like, <laughs> it seems who's like a lot of Jess? just kind of chill dudes yeah. around. But I wanted to say to you, <laughs> that video, like, you're obviously not afraid of heights. Mm because holy Love a bit of heights. fucking shit <laughs> you literally went right to the edge yeah I wanted I know, to like I'm I wouldn't say I'm crazy bad with heights but holy shit 26 meters is high by the way yeah. like, Cause you it, don't uh, realize uh, until you stand the, there when you go to like what the National Aquatic Center that's yeah. 10 meters 10 meters or whatever that's a lot of people are like there's no way I'm jumping off yeah. that so like I was one of those moments where I said to myself like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity hopefully it's not but like at, the mo- at that time yeah. I was like this is a once-off. Like, how the hell am I 
ever going to be at a Red Bull Cliff <laughs> you didn't Dive. Look nervous? Like no, uh, I was a bit, but you know, there's a guy ha- doing a handstand yeah. on the edge, and he's walking his legs back yeah. and forth, and he's in a pair of sweats. I'll, I'll put the video up. In the video. Yeah. <laughs> he's in a pair of sweats. I'm like, all right, like, I can he send you this. He's not. He's wearing trousers. He's gonna get wet. So he <laughs> is a, a lunatic, and he goes. Oh, you have a camera? I was like, yeah, 360. He goes, oh, 360, 360. So he, like, if you watch the video, that's what he's yelling at the beginning. He's yeah, running, yeah. oh, 360, yeah. 360, taking the piss out of me. And then he goes, are you ready? And he does this handstand on the edge yeah. of it. Like, Literally, his thumb oh. is off it. Like, Yeah, so yeah. if he could do that, I was like, I fair, can stand. Fair, I fair. can stand somewhere near yeah. the edge. Now, I have a question. One question. Do you play Guinness golf? No. Do you know what Guinness golf is? No, like splitting the splitting the harp or splitting, splitting the e, the splitting the g. Yeah, so I, we do a golf. No, we call it Guinness golf because technically it's like, you know, it'd be like you know taking a shot kind of thing or I don't know. Never heard the term Guinness golf. Split the g. Split the g. Okay, you're All split the g. Long. Okay. My um, good friend, I was at the shed, man. My good friend Sean Kent told me about year two two years, just as I was starting to get this gear he was like did you ever hear mm-hmm. see this thing split the G mm-hmm. some people say split the E split the harp yep personally I think split the G sounds best yep because yeah this is actually non-branded you've got it there I right? have it this is the new glass so this is the more difficult one which I didn't do by the way I was just while I was drinking I was like oh maybe I should ask this question but I personally do between the harp and the N too easy well not on the new glass uh, the new glasses yeah but you've got like I've missed it by a mile you've got Oh no! I know there's a big You've got space. A good space. Whereas, mm. if we're talking split the G, oh yeah, it's a line. It has I to mean, get it's... on that line. Yeah. So okay, no, no, it's fair enough. I just I I'm interested like, because what do you take like, <laughs> to get pissed on no. that, Of course. Well, essentially, what it is like we the reason it. is is like you either get a hole in one or you go out of bounds. Yeah. It's kind of the idea. So that's that's, that's, that's where the gun. Yeah, Guinness, G- go- Guinness golf for ages, but I never heard that. There you go. Yeah. Harry, you're a big cooking head. Mm. I don't really care for cooking to be mm-hmm. honest with you so I'm just gonna I'm not gonna ask you to tell me all about cooking no so I'm gonna ask you because this would be more value that's the key word these value. days value bring value to my audience of, yes. of, of gentlemen okay give me your top three tips mm-hmm. for whining and dining but you haven't got a clue lady friend or man friend comes over you just gotta whip something up you okay. gotta look like you can cook what am I doing? Top three tips. Top three tips. One would be something you're interested in. Don't be cooking something that like you've never had before just because it's like you're trying to impress. Yeah. You know, make something that you love to eat, but like, you know, make it just nicer to an extent, right? So like, That's okay, so you true. can do a spaghetti bolognese. You can do it really poorly. Not poorly is a bad word, but you could do it with very minimal effort. Yeah. Right? Which is just like brown, brown the meat, cook the pasta, throw some sauce on, done. Or you can do a spaghetti bolognese where you cook some veg, you're cooking garlic, rosemary, all that kind of stuff. You're adding in stock and you're like putting in the oven for 45 minutes and you're letting it slowly simmer. Yeah. Like adding in tin tomatoes. So that's a whole different ball game. It's the same so meal. Do what you know, but just do Put some love into it. Yeah, put some love in there. Two, put some love in there. Yeah. Uh, the other thing would be give yourself some time like something can go wrong in the kitchen you don't want to be running around sweating trying to make sure that yeah. um you know if something goes wrong that you don't have you don't have enough of extra of something yeah. especially if it's the first time that you're doing it like i've i've messed up in the kitchen so many times it's yeah. like just give yourself that extra extra t- half an hour give yourself that extra bag of rice whatever it may yeah. be or like so you got a lad and he's bringing a girl over he's seen her a couple of times he's gonna yeah. cook for her do as much as you can get always have extra before she gets there just never know what might happen she walks in the door you're just kind of flipping (laughs) and and simmering and whatever and then looking like you know what you're doing exactly and then the third one would probably be um don't be afraid um to you know try different flavors too so like whether it's adding in some spices from the spice drawer or like maybe you buy like a different sauce that you've never heard of before but like it says in the recipe to add it in you yeah. know do a little bit of research about it yeah. see what it says if it doesn't really tickle your fancy in terms of the flavors that are coming off it leave it that's not a problem but if you're thinking oh i think i might really like that 
Go and get it, add it in. There's a reason it's been put yeah. on that recipe sheet. Yeah, that's definitely a So give it a go and all that all those little bits will come together and it'll make it. It's more just like three tips for me personally. There you go. Okay, well they <laughs> last cooking question. Simple yes or no. Yeah. Eggs in the microwave. I don't yes eat eggs. No. You don't eat eggs? No. <laughs> Have you ever cooked eggs? Uh no. I don't I, I literally my whole life hate eggs that's psychopathic i know i you know what you're the only person i've ever met who doesn't like eggs i would love to like eggs as well because i i see my brother and the ease that we egged as a kid no i actually <laughs> walked into the kit into the kitchen as a kid when my mom was making eggs and i got sick so just from, just from the smell from birth, you just just hate it. it's in my genetics there somewhere to finish us off yeah we'll have one more swig of this okay Little nightcap. Mm. <clears throat> a nightcap. So I know you like whiskey. I didn't know the fancy stuff. There you go. Got, Jameson, I know you like Jameson. Lovely. Jameson's fine. Pulling out all the stops here. Boom. Look at that. I also know you like... <laughs> you drink your whiskey... Where did they come from? Yeah. You drink your whiskey neat. Neat, yeah. I don't. think it's disgusting, but okay. we're going to do it. Okay. And also, last thing, and you're not leaving here until you do it. Okay. I watched another podcast where you said you knew the words to the L Triangle. I used to know the words to the well, L Triangle. Well, I have the lyrics, Harry. <laughs> I have the lyrics. And the L Triangle is the old acapella. Triangle. So we're going to sing three verses. We're going to neck a whistle. When jingle, are, jangle. Oh, Harry, you're getting ahead of yeah, yourself. I'm just trying to get in the mood. Lads. I have the lyrics here. So, so, Launch your lights. You, you do the whiskey there. Okay. So fun, uh, funnily I'll enough. Funnily enough. I'm sponsored by Jameson. No. Hashtag plug. No, funny enough, I worked I worked in the Guinness storehouse for a summer, and I also did Jameson whiskey. Well, IDL Jameson whiskey tastings for a summer as well. Which was more crack to work in? Oh, ja- definitely Jameson. Different. Completely different. Completely, one one was selling. One was trying to help like sell whiskeys to American tourists coming into the shop and then one was actually through the whole Guinness experience so yeah. completely different like spinning yarns and Guinness well spinning yarns and James as well say so when <laughs> you're the poorer ah, yeah. we're necking it so say so, so when nah, that's fine no it's only only small only a drop only small have a smell get an idea then what you're going to do when you're ready to drink is you're going to do the same thing you're going to have a big smell you're going to breathe in hold your breath drink and then after you drink, then you release. So and big then, smell of this. Yes. Right. And there you go. You should actually get a bit more flavor. Not as bad as usual. There you go. That's it. And the same this thing. This is what I needed because <laughs> I want to be that guy who goes to a restaurant or a bar and says whiskey neat like mm. you're just that type of guy harry <laughs> you got head on you whereas like yeah that's that's the that's the least disgusting that's ever tasted well i'm happy i could so yeah help in some regards <laughs> but yeah that's anybody who tells you anything to do with tasting it's all about having a smell yeah drink and then release yeah, it and sounds like so reason, bullshit, but it's it really has if worked. you go into the guinness storehouse when you do the Guinness tasting, it's exactly what they're going to tell you. Yeah. They're going to tell you to stand up straight, yeah. Yeah. look straight out, yeah. bring it up. Elbow up, you're like this. Have a smell. I yeah. can't get it any higher. Have a smell, mm. have a drink, and then release. And right. for whatever reason, it helps. Harry McNulty, Salty Nuts. Slauncher. Slauncher. <laughs> Let's have a sing song. Here we go. I'll start. You're or starting. You I'll go on. Go on. A hungry feeling came over me stealing. Go! And the mice were squealing in my prison cell And the old triangle went jingle jangle All along the banks of the Royal Canal That'll do it. Harry, <laughs> Harry McNulty, Salty Nuts. This has been Only Cans. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Slancho, lads. <laughs>